In the last lecture, we looked at what data is. In this lecture, we're going to start to explore some of the differences in different kinds of data. So if you think about human beings and how we learn, uh, we read, we experiment, we do different, or we perform different experiences, we observe things, we recite, you know, you take tests, you practice, uh, you have to demonstrate things to learn. So, you know, something like this, we're going to talk a little bit, we're going to try some things, we're going to have some exercises, uh, and that's how we're going to learn about some of these topics. But generally speaking, in machine learning and artificial intelligence, machine learning models just need data. They need to be able to uh, analyze data and perform this analysis over and over again on a lot of different uh different records of data, different entities of data. So uh, lots of different kinds of models out there. Um, we're going to see models that identify objects and images. We're going to predict trends. We're going to answer questions. Uh, you know, there are different types of generative models. There's a lot of different things out there. And each one of them is going to need a different kind of data. Uh, you know, training an image recognition model on a bunch of textbooks probably won't do you much good unless you're trying to recognize images of textbooks. So, uh, you know, we need to think about the, the differences and how this data, you know, how, how to treat data differently. Um, we tend to think of two major categories of data. Uh, there is structured data and there is unstructured data. So let's start with structured data. Um, on a very dumb definition, structured data is data that has structure. Uh, and that's kind of dumb, but it also is pretty straightforward. Uh, structured data tends to have some kind of structure. It has tends to be tabular. It tends to follow some kind of rules, uh, has like the consistent patterns or consistent constraints applied to it. Uh, it generally tends to be organized consistently. So, you know, if you think of something like an Excel spreadsheet, it doesn't necessarily have all of the constraints, but there's some structure to it. You know what's in each field, you know what's in each record. And databases tend to have more constraints than that. So your typical relational database is going to be probably uh, some kind of structured data. Uh, we're used to seeing structured data. We have text files that typically have structured data. We have spreadsheets that typically have structured data. We have databases, even some NoSQL data stores have some kind of structure to them. So all of these are ways that we're used to seeing structured data. Uh, typically, structured data is going to have uh, dimensions or attributes or some type of measurement. Uh, depending on our context, we may call all of these different things. In, in, in data management terms, we tend to call these entities, and entities tend to have attributes. Um, but you know, if you think about it, an entity is like a record, it's like a database entry. Uh, there's a lot of different ways that we, we describe data, uh, but ultimately they are all the same thing. You know, a database table is going to be tabular. It's going to have records, it's going to have columns, and you know, the intersection of those records and columns are going to be fields, and those are going to have some associations within that record and you know, potentially to other tables. Unstructured data is a little bit different. Unstructured data is a little harder to define because unstructured data can be a lot of different things. Um, generally, I like to think about unstructured data is data that's not easy to directly analyze. You know, so if I want to take seven different fields that are numeric, I can see if they're the same, I can see if there are trends, I can see how they change. But if I take seven unrelated images of a tree, for example, uh, what's the trend there? What's the mathematical um, relationship between seven pictures of a tree? Uh, how does that how does that correspond to changes? You know, those things are a little bit harder to, to describe or to explain. Uh, so things like images, things like free text, uh, you know, like a book might be unstructured data or mostly unstructured data. Video can be uh, unstructured or is typically unstructured data. Documents, you know, documents are kind of a space where there's a little bit of structure, but tends to be a lot less structure. You know, tends to be more like free text, natural language type of things in documents. Uh, meeting transcripts, chat transcripts, these are all examples of data that is mostly unstructured. Um, some of these are going to have some structure to them, and sometimes the practice that you need to engage is to apply some structure or apply some uh, metadata to, to this, these uh, different types of data, but ultimately these are all examples of unstructured data. So with unstructured data, uh, storage, access, processing, these are all going to be important concerns. Uh, how we treat unstructured data is going to be very different from how we treat structured data. Um, for example, size, you know, in structured data, characters and numbers, they tend to be just a few bytes each. You know, if you have a, a very straightforward image from your, your phone's, or your mobile phone's camera, it's probably going to be three megabytes or bigger, you know, so I think that you, you, you have to think about how the data differs. You know, if I have a, a database with 100 records, it's probably not going to be that much data, but if I have a, a folder with 100 images, 
you know, you can already be look, or moving up to a gigabyte there. So I think that how we, we deal with size in data uh, becomes really important when we're considering the differences between structured and unstructured data. Um, database tables can be queried very quickly. You know, if I have a database table, even though it has hundreds of thousands of records, I can probably identify averages, min, max, you know, I can, I can uh, extract, extract that data and, and create a chart. You know, I can do all of those things very, very quickly. Um, video processing, however, if you've ever processed video, uh, can take a long time for even basic operations. Changing exposure in a video can take uh, seconds, minutes, you know, depending on how long the clip is. So, you know, again, like structured data and unstructured data, processing and analysis, identifying things, the, 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 it could be orders of magnitude of, of effort and difference. Um, management, you know, engineers and database administrators have been managing lots of structured data for a long, long time. There are a lot of mature tools available for this. For structured data, I mean, we've been working with structured data in, uh, in the technology field for uh, decades, decades and decades. Um, lots of different ways you can do this. You know, there are entire companies that specialize primarily in databases and they specialize primarily in tools for managing these databases. So there's a lot you can do there to, to replicate data, to, um, to archive data. Uh, you know, you, you have a lot of capabilities available out there for, for compressing, you know, like all, all of these tools and analysis, all of this is available. Unstructured data, though, can be a little bit more difficult to manage. It's not quite as ubiquitous to have tools for those things. Now, they exist. It's not that there aren't tools out there for analyzing or managing structured data. It's just that they tend to be a little bit more specific. They tend to be less generalized. They tend to be uh, sometimes less refined or, you know, less popular, you know, because of, you know, they're a little more compartmentalized. So, you know, we can, we can work with both of these, but, you know, the differences in how we approach them it can be complicated. Now, structured data usually is a little easier to work with. It's a little bit easier to uh, to start with. So we'll probably start with structured data, uh, but we'll get into unstructured data later uh, later on in this course. So that's all for now. Hopefully, you know you're, you're starting to wrap your head around the differences between structured data and unstructured data, uh, because we're going to continue to engage these topics uh, for the next several weeks. Thank you for watching.